Well, uh, you know, they've got one of my staff members said a very famous song, you know, Good Morning Vietnam. Well, good evening, Vietnam. Uh, and uh, good morning back in America. Before I begin, I want to express my sadness uh, by the loss of life and devastation caused by the earthquake in Morocco. Our thoughts and prayers with the people of Morocco and my friend King Mohammed the seventh, the sixth, I should say, and his administ my administration, including Secretary of State Blinken, who is here with me today, is working with Moroccan officials on long distance here. We're working expeditiously to ensure American citizens in Morocco are safe, standing ready to provide any necessary assistance to the Moroccan people as well. Thank that off. Now, turning to the important visit here in Vietnam. As uh, General Secretary and I just shared so earlier today, about Morocco, this trip has Hawaii been a historic is moment. Today we can trace 50 year, a 50 year arc of progress in the relationship between our nations from conflict to normalization. This is a new elevated status that will be a force for prosperity and security in one of the most consequential regions in the world. We've elevated our cooperation directly to the Vietnamese highest tier of partnership referred to as the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. That means the United States has strengthened our ties with another critical Indo-Pacific partner. Our progress today builds on Camp David Trilateral with Japan and, and Republic of Korea and the United States. Comprehensive Strategic Partnership, the United States launched with, with ASEAN last year, and the engagement with, Pacific Island, with the Pacific Island Forum. Our strengthened alliances with the Philippines and AUKUS partnership with Australia and the United Kingdom, our elevated quad engagement with India, Australia, and Japan, and the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. And all the effort we've advanced from day one of my administration to demonstrate to our Indo-Pacific partners and to the world, the United States is a Pacific nation, and we're not the United going States anywhere. is a Pacific nation. Now let me also speak to significant business we got done in, in, in what India the fuck does that even mean? This was an important moment for the United States to demonstrate our global leadership and our commitment to solving the challenges that matter most to people around the world. Investing in inclusive growth and sustainable development, addressing the climate crisis, strengthening food security and education, advancing global health and health security. We showed up ready to work and we showed the world the United States as a partner with a positive vision for our shared future. As a G20, we, at the G20, we made progress on issues like multilateral development bank development. nations that are neither poor nor wealthy but we couldn't qualify before, debt relief, and increased infrastructure needs, not only in the global south but other parts of the world as well. We forged a groundbreaking new partnership with, that will connect India to Europe with the Middle East and Israel with transportation by rail and by shipment through uh, and energy supplies and digital connections that are going to open up untold opportunities for transformative economic investment through that on that entire card. We've also discussed Russia's brutal and illegal war in Ukraine. And there was sufficient agreement in the room on the need for just for a just and lasting peace that upholds the principles of the UN Charter and respects sovereignty and territorial integrity. I want to once again thank Prime Minister Modi for his leadership and his hospitality in hosting the G20. Yeah, and delivering a he child and I have had substantial sniff. discussions about how we're going to continue to strengthen the partnership between India and the United States, building on the Prime Minister's visit to the White House last June. And as I always do, I raise the importance of, of respecting human rights and the vital role the civil society and the free press have in building a strong and prosperous country with Mr. Modi. And we've gotten a lot of important work done, and I'm looking forward to another good day tomorrow here. Now I will take your questions. Uh oh, question time. Let me see. They told Three. me they gave me five people here. They gave me five um, people here. Nandita uh, uh, of Reuters. Um, thank you for taking my question, Mr. President. There you are. Good to see you. I'm sorry. Um, last week, China questioned um, the code sincerity of the Biden administration. I'm sorry, the what? Of the Biden administration. And accused the United States of containing China 
while pushing for diplomatic talks. How would you respond to that? And do you think President Xi is being sincere about getting the relationship back on track as he bans Apple in China? Well, look, uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, I am sincere about getting the relationship right. And one of the things that is going on now is China's beginning to change some of the rules of the game uh, in terms of trade and other issues. And so one of the things we talked about, for example, is that we're now talking about making sure that uh, no Chinese, uh, no one the Chinese government can use a Western cell phone, um, those kinds of things. And so really what this trip is about it was less about containing China. I, I, I don't want to contain China. I just want to make sure we have a relationship with China that is on the up and up, squared away. Everybody knows what it's all about. And one of the ways you do that is you make sure that we are talking about the same things. And uh, I think that one of the things we've done, I've tried to do, and I've talked with a number of our staff about this for the last, I guess, six months, is we have an opportunity to strengthen alliances around the world to maintain stability. That's what this trip is all about. Yeah. Having India cooperate much more with the United States, be closer to the United States, Vietnam being closer to the United States, it's not about containing China. It's about having a stable base, a stable base in the Indo-Pacific. And for example, when uh, I was spending a lot of time talking with President Xi, he asked why we were doing, why was I going to have the Quad, meaning Australia, India, uh, Japan, the United States. And I said to maintain stability. It's not about isolating China. It's about making sure the rules of the road, everything. Yeah, we wouldn't want to say anything bad about China. Space and not about, and you know, international oh. rules of the road are, 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 are And so, uh, and I hope that, uh, I think that, uh, Prime Minister Xi, I mean, she has some uh, uh, some difficulties right now. All countries end up with difficulties. And there's some economic difficulties working his way through. I, I want to see China succeed economically. Uh -huh. I want to see him succeed by the rules. Yeah, we want to see him succeed. We want China uh, to succeed. The of course we do. The next question was to uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg, liberal rag. Mr. President, following up on your comments on China and the economy, you recently called China's economy a ticking time bomb. Do you believe the country's slowdown could risk destabilizing the global economy or causing China to be more aggressive defensively? Say the first part of the question again. What did you say? He didn't even know the question. Do you believe the country's slowdown and growth could risk destabilizing the global economy or cause China to be more aggressive defensively, including with Taiwan. And separately, sir, are you worried about the meeting between President Putin and Kim Jong-un, if that could mean Russia has more gains in the war in Ukraine? Look, uh, uh. I think China has a difficult economic problem right now for a whole range of reasons that relate to international growth and lack thereof, and uh, the, the policies that China has followed. And so I, I don't think it's going to cause China to invade Taiwan. As a matter of fact, the opposite probably didn't have the, the same capacity yeah. that it had yeah. before. But as I said, I'm not, we're not looking to hurt China. Uh, sincerely, we're all better off if China does well. China does well by the international rules, grows the economy. But they have had some real difficulty in terms of their economy of late, particularly in real estate side of that end of the bargain. And I think the actions that they're going to have to take are ones that are they're in the process of deciding right now. And I'm not going to predict what, what, what way it will come out, but we're not looking to decouple from China. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to sell China material that would enhance their capacity to make more nuclear weapons, to engage in defense activities that are contrary to what is viewed as 
most people think is a positive development in the region. And, uh, but we're not trying to hurt China. Um, okay. BBC, uh, war? Am I correct? Is that correct, Bob? It is. My name is Laura Baker from BBC News. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. How are you? Well, thank you. Good. These five-day trips around the world are a problem. I can imagine. It is evening. I'd like to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, in the last six months, you've signed packs and deals with Japan, South Korea, Philippines, Australia, and even the Pacific Islands. You're here standing in Beijing's backyard. Now, China says this is part of your Cold War mentality. Are they right, sir? Are they right, Mr. President? Is it a danger of a Cold War? And when will you meet Mr. Xi? Well, I hope I get to see Mr. Xi sooner than later. Um, I've spent more time than any other world leader has, some total, over the last 12 years. Uh, so I hope we get to see him again soon. But, uh, no, look. Uh, for example, one of the things we did in, uh, in India, we provided for a new path that's going to save everybody money, increase the third world, the third world, the, the uh, global south's capacity to grow by sending, we're going to we're going to have a new railroad from India all the way across to the Mediterranean, the shipping lanes and pipelines to across the Mediterranean, through Europe, up into, uh, up into Great Britain and beyond. That's all about economic growth. It has nothing to do with hurting China or helping China. It has to do with dealing with everything from climate change to making sure that these countries can succeed economically and grow. Look, my thesis has been from the beginning, both domestically and uh, in, in terms of foreign policy, invest in your people. Invest in the people. Give them a chance. Everything's better off when people, I am not it's going to sound trite. If everybody in the world had a job they got up in the morning and wanted to go to and thought they, and they could put three squares on the table for their family, no matter where they live, the whole world would be better off. It would be a lot better. Hey, Dee, what's going That's on, man? That's the notion. Good to have you in the house. house. For example, you know, one of the things we're doing in terms of, uh, I, I proposed a long time ago at the G7, now it's just going to come to fruition in the G20. Well, he's just sucking sure up the China over here, man. Oh, China. Oh, China. Oh, China. Oh, China. Think about it. There is no the way button, to cross the African continent by road, by, by, by rail. But, but, and there's not even but, a direct highway across. Now, let's assume for the sake of discussion, we talk about food shortages. Assume there was one country in, in that vast continent that had a, 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 an a, a, a excess of, of uh, foodstuffs and resources. How would they get it to where they're going to go? How are they going to do it? That's why we're also going to invest in Him and his son and his family, no better than the mob. Solar uh, facilities in Angola have the largest, the largest solar facility in the world, the more the largest. That helps Angola, but also helps the whole region. So I think we think too much. Yeah, especially the children mining all the mineral issues. It's not about that. Oh, no. It's about generating economic growth and stability in all parts of the world. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, sorry. Who's next on my list? Okay. Who else did they tell me to call on? Um, 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 I'm pronounce it. Pavilion? Uh, what's your name? Uh, Pavilia? Is that my pronounce that correctly? What an idiot. There you are. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President, it's already and for AFP. Um, I have a question on the climate crisis. You just mentioned the G20. Just this week, the United States warned that if there is no phasing out of fossil fuels, it won't be possible to reach the goals of the Paris Agreement. There was no agreement at the G20 on fossil fuels. How concerned are you about this lack of consensus? It wasn't so much an agreement that it's we're trying to meet the goals of the G20. The United States is going to meet those goals, by the way. We're going to exceed those goals. You see goals. the camera? A lot of other oh, countries are as well. It's just wandering off. We want to give those countries that don't have the economic wherewithal and did not cause the problem in the first place. For example, I met with Lula in Brazil. I started off way back in the 80s. Oh, no. Here he goes with, telling stories. Uh, uh, it's really fine. Republican Senator named Dick Luger. 
We said, here's what we're going to do. He's off, if he's you off prompter, money, man. Holy shit. We're going to forgive your debt if you maintain your forest because they become carbon sinks. They are the things that take carbon out of the air. Somebody's got to And fact so check we're this. talking to what we should be going. And the countries <laughs> that cleared their land and put cattle on it and farming and, and did all the things that increased development. They, in fact, are the one of the reasons why, the main reason why we've gotten as far down the road to disaster here as we have. And so it seems that if we have the economic capacity, we, those nations, should be getting together and providing help for the nations that don't have the wherewithal to do it. The economic wherewithal, the infrastructure wherewithal. Mm -hmm. And that's why, for you example, mean more I transfer of wealth. in the interest of time, I Redistribution. just mentioned Angola, man. Angola has the capacity to generate megawatts of energy through... Yeah, Angola so has the ability to Angola probably line your fucking pockets with that. cash. Is it in the interest of the whole world? If, if they're, in fact, able to generate significant c capacity to absorb, uh, to Ooh. prevent carbon from being released in the air? I think it is. Wait so a minute. what we're trying to do Hang on, I gotta find is my help button. those nations... Uh, particularly You're not the saying that he's a where they're not as wealthy, where they're not as many that again. opportunities. You're not to saying be able he's to a deal with holster. Things that Are you? they want to no, do. I think I got it right the second time. For example, time. and I'll end with this, there is more carbon absor absorbed from the atmosphere on a daily basis. And I'll look to my, my friend John Kerry and forgot more about this than most people know. Correct me if I could get this wrong, John. Oh yeah, we will I'm correct you. I'm sure I'm right. Uh -huh. And that is that there's more carbon observed from the air into the Amazon region, into the ground, the ground, than admitted in the entire United States on the same basis. What? Now imagine if people go in and do what we did. What the fuck did he just say? 150, 200 years, 250 years ago. And cut down the forest. And start farming in that area. No longer have that great carbon sink. We, you know, it's going to, it would be a gigantic problem. So we should be going to areas, whether it's in the Congo or other places, as, as the G7 nations and as the wealthy G20 nations, though, and providing the kind of infrastructure they need to be able to benefit. And guess what? In addition You're going to, to provide the environment overall, and the only existential threat humanity faces, even more frightening than a, than a nuclear war, is global is warming. Global warming going right. above 1.5 degrees. Because, of course, a nuclear war wouldn't warm up the world at all. And we're in real trouble. There's no way back. From God. It. And so... Oh, you fucking demagogic, fear-mongering bastards. That, that uh, 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 pipeline, uh, that uh, railroad we're talking about going across from, the, from India throughout the Middle East and the, across the Mediterranean and all through Europe, that's going to have hydrogen pipeline there. This is going to significantly reduce the amount of carbon emitted in the air, but it costs a lot of money to put that down. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the world's going to say, a lot of money. Costs a lot of money. Of interest to do it. We got to help them. So I have not. I we got to dig deep in our pockets, so boys and girls, Americans. We're going to be able to, uh, you know, to, uh, to help the Congo. I, say it? Uh, I, I think, I think we can triple the renewable capacity for uh, as it relates to uh, global warming by the year 20, 2030, 2030. Countries following the IRA playbook, which is the one we passed, clean energy jobs are going to create manufacturing jobs. Manufacturing? Example, the consequence of what What's a manufacturing done, job anyway? We, we the, manufacturing. We have, this, we have the strongest economy in the world Can you spell that today. for me? Man. Right now today, the United States of America Man, no. the strongest economy in the world. Uh, world. Uh, in the world. In the world. Uh, now we've got more idiot. to do, but we have the strongest economy. He's going to start world. whispering in the mic and again soon. We're doing we change the mechanism. In the world. Economies. And that is instead of trickle down economy, that is if the wealthy and the corporations do very well, everybody's going to do well. But the truth of the matter is, I've never bought that theory. But I think the times have changed, and a lot of leading economists are beginning to agree with me. Yeah, Just totally. Just like straight-out academic economists. Uh -huh. And that is we should build from economic the bottom up from the middle and the out. middle out. From the bottom up. Bottom up. Right up your bottom. Does is that well. what he said? Everybody does well. The wealthy still do very, very well. well.
Don't you feel like yeah, we're all no doing problem. so well, boys and girls? You can still be a billionaire yeah. under that system as well. Yeah. But you're going to start paying your taxes. Yeah, right? you're going you to start that's paying them taxes. But yeah. all kidding aside, so there's, we have, I think the other thing is dawning on people. Many of you are foreign policy experts who have been engaged for a long time. Did you ever think you'd be sitting at a G20 conference where everyone was preoccupied with the notion of global warming? Not Did a joke. you ever Did think, you ever think, think of it? That? They're all preoccupied. And there's a, my, my brother loves having his famous We've actually reimagined the world. Quotes, you know, and one, one of them is there was, there's a movie about John Wayne, he's an Indian scout. And oh, he's talking about the, John Wayne now. I think now. it was one of the Indian scouts. Tribes, in America, tribes. Back on the reservation. Reservations. And he's standing with the Union, so he's a all arms. They're in their, on their horses and their saddles. Horses, saddles. And there's three or four Indians in headdresses. Headdresses. And the Union soldiers. Union soldiers. Union soldiers basically saying, the Indians, come with me, we'll take care of you, we'll be everything will be good. And the Indian scout, the Indian looks at John Wayne and points to the Union soldier and says, he's a lion dog-faced pony soldier. Oh no, he told the lion, lion dog-faced dog pony, pony soldier, soldier fucking about, story. About global warming, but not anymore. All of a sudden, we all realize it. It's a problem. And there's nothing like it's a problem. Like, I told you, you started you know, whispering. And, uh, I'm sorry. See. I'm just following my orders here. Just following uh, my orders here. They put him back on prompter. They told him, get the fuck back on prompter. Oh my God, he told the lion. If you're just joining us, he just told the lion dog face pony soldier story. I need it. Be away. Thank you, Mr. President. I what hope you didn't think that calling only on women would get you softballs tonight. Oh, I know better than that. <laughs> if you send me a softball, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I'd probably strike out even worse. <laughs> Let me ask you about, um, you, you've spent lots of time talking about all the time you spent with President Xi and the importance of leader-to-leader -leader communication. Come on, bring a hard question. Yet you two haven't spoken in 10 months. 10 and months you haven't spoken. I just wonder, are you worried that this is destabilizing the U.S.-China relationship? And what are you going to do about it? And then, if I may, on Ukraine, sir? Go um, ahead. Ask the question. <laughs> Ask the question. The G20 communicate didn't name Russia as the aggressor. Um, have you managed to rally more support or sympathy across the G20, or is this emerging as a wedge issue uh, with Global South? And does that change your commitment? He's to never going to remember the two it's questions. It's not a wedge together. issue with Global South. It's a wedge issue with Russia, which is present, and with China, which is present, with which has representation. And uh, so, and by the way, uh, I am uh, um, my my team, my staff still meets with. President Xi's people in his cabinet, in effect. I met with his number two person here in, in, uh, me, in uh, uh, India uh, today. Uh, so it's not like there's a, a, a crisis if I don't personally speak to him. It'd be better if I did. Uh -huh. But uh, I think, look, look, this is not a criticism. It's an observation. He has his hands full right now. He has overwhelming unemployment with his youth. Oh, so One you're not talking to him because you're giving him space to breathe? Right now. I'm he's not too happy busy? That, but it's not working. So he's trying to figure out, I suspect, I don't know. What is this, like, like giving, giving your girlfriend a little space? what to do about the particular crisis you're having now. But I don't think it's a crisis relating to conflict between China and the United States. No, it's no conflict. As a matter of fact, us. I think it's less likely to cause that kind of conflict. Uh, I don't, uh, anyway. Anyway. I just think that there are other things on leaders' minds, and they respond to what's needed at the time. And look, nobody <laughs> likes having celebrated international meetings if you don't know what you want at the meeting. If you don't have a game plan, you may have a game plan. He just hasn't shared it with me. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. 
<laughs> what did you talk about with Mr. Lee? You said you spoke to the number Oh my two. god, he said I'm going to go to bed. Yeah, yeah. What we did talk you talk about with why are you tired, Mr. President? Do you not have the energy? Stability. We talked about making sure that the third world, the, uh, excuse me, the third world, the, uh, the can't say the, third uh, world anymore. The Southern Hemisphere had access to change, had access. We, it wasn't confrontational at all. No, no. Thank, thank you, everybody. Oh, well, thank you, everybody. Yes, we got to go handle Joe. Joe is toddling now. We got to put him to bed. Turn the music up so we can't hear the questions. Turn the music up louder so they can't hear the questions. Oh my God. They start blaring jazz music, guys. Oh my God. Oh God, a prostate exam from Edward Sisterhands. Jeez. Guys, man, I'm really glad I put that one on. But boy, you're right, D. Shit, that was that was painful to watch. Uh clearly deteriorating, clearly. Uh babbling on and on and on. But you know, clearly, as uh as I said earlier and we were talking about earlier, man, he is so clearly a puppet of the Chinese government, okay? The Chinese got their hooks in our government so bad. And I mean him, first of all, him and his son and all this mess, right, that's going on. So, yeah, okay, so now you see a test pattern. That ain't no fun, so let's go over here. Yeah, man, it's good to see you. I don't know if you're still watching, um, but that was pathetic. Um, see if you can find me something else to stream maybe so I can put on because... They're not going to want to put up with me too long. Every time you you got to put your hand thing on. Yeah, okay. Because I can tell the camera goes every time you smack the table. So um, anyway, yeah, that was really pathetic, man. That was terrible. Um, and hopefully we'll see some more ridiculous shit come out of the G20. But yeah, what did we hear? Um, we heard global warming is the greatest existential threat to the world including nuclear war now russia just deployed uh like a week ago the satan 2 tactical nuclear weapon rig i don't know it's on a truck or some shit i don't know what it is doesn't sound good satan 2 right they put that son of a bitch out on the battlefield it's in service right and this these fuckers, <laughs> these communist Marxist bastards, right? They are continuing to demagogue and fear monger uh, and tell you, look you dead in the fucking face and go, look, man, we need to keep shoveling money, resources, all this crap into the global warming agenda because that can kill you. And, you know, this whole... Ah, global conflict thing and war that's okay don't worry about any of that shit that's fine it's fine don't worry about the nuclear war that's about to happen yeah it is it's true yeah man it's true yeah so anyway uh if you're just joining us um like subscribe uh share and uh hit the notification button if you would, because it's totally useless. Uh, I've been told that absolutely um, nobody um, <laughs> is getting notified that I'm going live. But, you know, do it anyway, and it's the time to remind you, just check back with us, right? If you like the content that you find here, um, you're going to want to uh, just check back because you can't count on that thing to, t to tell you that we're going live. And I don't know if we're gonna, how long we're going to live stream today, uh, if there's something interesting. Is there anything interesting? I'm chatting. Oh, you're chatting. You can't. All right. I'm going to go see if I can't find something interesting and uh, just talk to these people about the news in the meantime. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk about the gun ban, right? Or uh, let me see. I can pop up. Uh, yeah, let's just put the live stream thing back up again like that. That's good. Oh, Corrine Jean-Pierre. Put her on. This can't be today, is it? So uh, 
uh, that's where uh, I, I'll certainly. Well, I'll temporarily, I'll put uh, that on. Look, we have seen, uh, we've experienced increases in COVID More tap dancing over here. I don't know if this live. No, it's not live. There's no press briefing today. Well, I'll just, I'll just take. I'm. What's taking me so long is I've got my wife who's like. Bothering me. All right, stop. Got it. I'm bobbing and weaving over here, guys. So we went out last night. We went out to dinner, right? And uh, I promised that I'd tell you guys about it. Um, we went out and had just the most lovely damn dinner. Um, it was at um, a place called, well, stop. Why is this coming up now? Every time I bring up YouTube, it's bringing up my echoes from the past thing. It has a mind of its own sometimes. Remember I was doing the voiceover on that? I was trying to do the voiceover stuff of that. Uh, okay. Let's go premium. Yeah, so we went out to dinner, and we had a locally served dinner at a place called Labyrinthia which is a bed and breakfast kind of thing with a garden and uh, go to Facebook. Okay. You're going to log us in. Oh wait. Okay. X out of this shit. X out of that shit. Okay. Go to search. Left. Got it. Search the rig of, um, D I R G. D A R I G. O. See this window that's in yeah, my not face? That one. Go up one. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we search. I can't read my screen. I'm sorry. Um, go to post. No, this is something else. Well, this is the dinner. This mm. is the thing for the dinner, but I don't know. Well, that's not fun. I don't want to look at a menu. <laughs> I could, I mean, you know, the people are over here going, oh, you're going to show us pictures of your dinner and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to show them a menu. Come on. All right. I'm going to go back to finding a live stream, which is what I was trying to do before. Right. And we can do that later. I don't know if you guys know, but my wife has functional retardedness or something like that, functional neurological retardedness or some disorder of that nature. And so it causes her to sometimes, when frustrated, utter the F word. <laughs> Isn't that most people? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, not that many times, though. I hear it a, a lot of times. So uh, let me see. Portland Annie is up. Andy's up. What's he doing? Uh, let me see. We got Scott Adams up. There's nothing really going on at all live. So I might not stay on. I have to read books anyway. But, uh, yeah, let me just go full screen again and uh, real quick and, uh, and just talk about the, the dinner last night. Because um, it was a lot of fun, man. And um, it, it was pretty cool. Uh Let's, well, we're socially awkward. And what I mean by that is, I mean, look, I, I grew up uh, and worked a professional career, traveled the world, three-piece suits. Uh, I can walk into a room of 300 people. I can talk to anybody. Uh, I have no confidence problem. As you can see, I'm gregarious. I'm outgoing. But I'm... Uh, but at 60 years old, I've seen too much of life, and I'm guarded, and I'm jaded, and, um, and I'm on a mission. I have a plan. I, I'm chiseled in what I'm doing. Um, and so that makes it very difficult to walk out into the world and interact with other people because at this point these days, you don't know whether you're dealing with friend or foe. There's no in-between anymore, right? It's not like you can just chat about some bullshit. You will step on a landmine. If you talk about anything else except for how delightful this food is, right, or the weather or the bugs or the sunset. 
And so uh, nervous about going into a situation like that. But I had a feeling that we were supposed to go there to make um, to make connections, right? And so uh, we did, and uh, it turned out to be great. We sat at the right table. There was three tables. The food was delightful. We had scallops uh, with prosciutto wrapped around them, and uh, everything was like uh, five star restaurant plating. Uh, their their foodies or gourmets, and so it was a nice local gathering out in Central Maine, under the you know sunset and stars and all that shit. And I didn't get any bug bites, and neither did you. It was great. We loved it. We had so much fun. And uh, it was good to get out. And, and Mama doesn't walk so good anymore, and it, so it's just difficult. I mean, we real, I realized last night, I'm old. We, you know, the other table, there was a kitty table. <laughs> and I don't mean, there was no kids there, but you know what I mean. There was a kitty table to me. And we happened to sit with some people that just were like totally, they, man, if you've been watching my show, there was like nothing I told them they didn't, they didn't already know. And they're like, oh, yeah, man, everybody thinks we're crazy, too. So I made some connections with some local people, right? And that was pretty neat, and I uh, was happy about that. And they had the like mind, and they said that they wanted to, uh, they felt the uh, necessity that it's time soon to start really making these local connections with people because we're going to start needing it in a physical sort of way soon. So I would encourage you to do the same, right? Um, and again, I'll just wrap up that you got to be mentally prepared that this thing can and probably will go sideways, right? At least minimum, you got to get your brain to the point. Yeah, just screw it. Don't be frustrated, please. So, and it, yes, it can happen, and at least it can happen. And more than not, more than not likely that it will. Then the, the second thing that you have to do is you have to be uh, spiritually prepared. And you better get right with God. Because at one point, you're going to die, right? And so um, getting right with God involves Christ and your sin. And you go figure that out. And third, you got to be physically prepared. Because at least if you skip step two, you got to do step three so that maybe you can get step two later before you die. So you don't die before you accomplish step two. You get it? Which is where step one comes in, too. Be be mentally prepared that it possibly can happen, right? Oh, God, she's taking the mouse again. So, uh, yeah, that's very important right now. And so uh, it was good. Unfortunately, I had my phone with me, and I didn't get the lady's email address or send an email, but we know how to get in contact with these people. They're just a spit down the road. And, um, and yeah, it was, um, it was good. It was good to get out. Uh, we spent time together in our own little bubble, me and Mama, and went on a kind of date night. And we also spent some time making some local connections and feeling like we're not alone in the world, you know, in this feeling that, yeah, everything is totally shit upside down. And I and I fear right now, I think what I observed at the dinner was that you got your people that are, and I don't even know what the generations are, but the just... In like 30s. 30s, right? I don't know what the hell generation that is. But what girl, uh, pregnant... Well, one of them's pregnant with a first baby. The people that are serving the dinner, they just have a baby. It's like, well, I don't know, year and a year and a half old, something like that, starting to toddle, or I guess, I don't know. Um, and we haven't been over there in a while and haven't seen her. But uh, anyway, shout out to Dorigo Farms. They did a, just a magnificent job. So if they watch this video, God, you guys, it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Uh, we were swept up in it. You, fantastic. Uh, the whole thing. Uh, first class from start to finish. Um, yeah, the only thing is bug spray for some people next time would be, would have been great to have on hand. Um, but yeah, so everything was delicious and, um, but yeah, the people that are in their thirties, they're, they're, they're sucked up in their own lives, right? They are, you know, in, in, in these case, some of these cases, the most joyous times of these people's lives. And so I can understand why I they don't want to see me. Do you understand? They don't want to hear me. Okay? They don't want to hear harbingers, right? They 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 they, they kind of want to go, 
la 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 things are really kind of going good i mean yeah you know the eggs are expensive and the milk's expensive and everything's kind of shitty but you know it's we're having a good time because they're surrounded in their life see my life is broken and 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 uh has been broken okay and put back together and um and it's and and it's and it's just i'm scarred right there's a lot of stuff going on battle hardened right but i also know what's going on and i see and i have the wisdom and they don't have the wisdom yet right so how is it that these people will obtain supernatural wisdom? Supernaturally, right? That's what's going to happen. People are going to start to get their eyes opened, not as much intellectually. I think what's going to happen is spiritually, people are going to see the corrupt cancer that we've become. And, and it's starting to happen. And, the, you know, the people are pushing back in New York and all sorts of other places, parents and, and uh, people in neighborhoods that, um, that don't want their neighborhoods destroyed, right? So... Anyway, uh, it's good. So I think I'm done for the day. I think I'm going to log it. I think I'm going to copy it over and call it my show for the day. Um, and uh, go do some other stuff and maybe just consume some media. And who knows? You know, like I said, uh, check back. Who knows? We might go live later if something happens. Pop off. It's Sunday, Sunday night. Something may happen. I don't know. Uh, or something interesting or a car chase comes on. We'll jump on, too. So I love car chases. Anyway, um, that's it. Mama, you got anything? No, no, no. Okay, well, we'll be back later today. yeah, we'll we'll be back later. I, I'll probably make a show anyway, so check back for that. And um, I'm True Slinger, and I am.